Hello everyone, this is a video I am making to go over some major changes I feel need to be made to the user interface and user experience of MapStory. I feel, you know, as you all know, MapStory is a gigantic task. Uh, I learned that firsthand doing this because uh, it took me a ton of time. I thought it would take under 10 hours. That doubled, and then that doubled again, and by the time I'm going to be done with this, it's going to reach 50. And I feel like I've really only begun. You know, this video is going to show just an overview of just, you know, just the basic features. I could easily do that much or more time going into the nitty gritty details of things, which we'll probably do over time. You know, I've really gained an appreciation of how much work people are putting into this. Um, I feel, however, that this is 100% worth the effort. Uh, I enjoyed every moment of doing this work because uh, I feel like Map Story is going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. I feel like it's going to be another, yet another way that the internet is changing the way we are learning, the way we're thinking, and the way we live. Uh, and as many of you know, I've been wanting to do this for years, uh, and I'm really grateful and lucky to be a part of it. Anyway, uh, going into things, um, going into the work I did on the UI UX stuff, the uh, biggest issue I feel is, is that there are many features in Map Story available that are, that are there now and are in development, but they all need to be integrated into one experience, one place, one experience, not just like in the website now, you know, in various places. I feel like it really needs to be centralized into a seamless uh, experience once again. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all what Map Story is, is now from a user's perspective. I think it's good to start with that. And then what I feel Map Story should be. Um, I actually made a bunch of mock-ups uh, of uh, the features and, and, how, and how things should be integrated. Um, and uh, that'll help us gain an, under, an, an understanding of things, hopefully. So thinking about this from the user's perspective, uh, starting on the main page here, okay. Let's say that somebody was given the website mapstory.org. This is what they would see. Now, uh, they would see that this turn style turning here, usually it's turning, I, I kind of paused it. Um, and and then they might read this little description here and then they might be like oh this looks interesting uh why don't i click on one of these and then they might open one let's say they opened this one this is one of the better map stories that have been made so far not many have been made because it's in development um obviously so um this is the new york city subway system it just shows the development over time uh you know individual stations and and lines opening up and some major uh events that took place um so this is the small map story you know th this is the kind of a small little window here and then there's some options you can do here like you can you know you can embed this map somewhere which is fantastic um but, uh, you know, somebody who happened upon Map Story would see tucked away in the corner here, there's this thing that says view maps, view this Map Story full screen. They might do that. And then they uh, might click there. And... and then they might open this up. Okay, so this is, they see the Map Story in a big in a, in a you know, they, they show, they see a very large version of this map. It looks much better. You know, they might hit play and see all the changes taking place. And they might notice in the corner there's this little button here that says, um, you know, and then they might click on that. And it's like, wow, there's a timeline here and I can scrub this timeline and it's a big timeline. And and uh, there's like, uh, you know, all these annotations popping up and it really adds to the story. It gives puts things in context uh, in a much better way. And uh, they might also have, uh, hover their mouse here and they might be like, oh, wow, the, my cursor changed. I wonder what's here. I'm going to click here. And then they click here and they're like, oh, I can change the layers. I can uh, change the base layers and and um, have all these features. I can even edit this map, etc.
But now, if you think about it from the user's perspective, in reality, they are probably the vast majority of the time, it's just like Wikipedia, they're not going to go, they're not going to be on the main page to start. You know, I've hardly been to the main page on Wikipedia, like the English Wikipedia. Really, they're going to Google, let's say, the New York City subway system, and then, and then hopefully, you know, we'll have like a map story somewhere in the list. And they might show this little small view here. Uh, but in reality, they'll probably uh, have links to this because this is what people want to show. You know, everything in, the de in detail. And they would have to, given how it's designed now, they would have to include instructions to click on that little button in the corner to open that up and maybe also this uh, button in, in on the edge here. Um, and so, anyway, uh, this is really where we would end up. This is where, you know, the links that would be provided in websites, in Google searches, and in emails, etc. This is where people would end up. And now this is where I feel, in what we now call full screen mode, I feel like this is where all the all the features need to be. All the features need to be integrated and they all need to be right here in this experience. A user should be able to search and browse map stories. They should be able to upload map stories and data. They should be able to view layers as a cartography tool. Um, they should be able to view mashups of map stories, create mashups as, as they please. They should be able to edit map stories. They should be able to view history and revert edits. That's version control. That's in development now. They should be able to view and edit attribute tables associated with story layers. They should be able to engage in discussions around map stories. They should be able to embed map stories. And they should be able to view personal storyteller pages as well as view charts and browse statistics. Um, I'll show that at some point. That's something that I feel needs to be integrated into things. So I'm going to interject here a little bit. Actually, uh, I realized that this video ended up being really long. Uh, I just completed, nearly completed the video. And uh, it's like, I, I feel like actually I'm just going to go over all the changes all at once and then uh, go into the nitty gritty details about each feature. Um, so I'll just start with this. Uh, this is the uh, full screen mode. Uh, this is how it looks now. This is how it should look like. Um, you'll see some changes here automatically, but this is sh how it should look like in viewing mode. Uh, you'll see the annotations on the right here, and uh, I changed the way the layers look and something about the annotations, and there's an option for a chart. Uh, and I changed the timeline as well. I really changed a lot of things. Um, and uh, so I feel like you should be able to search, like I said, search and browse and upload all at once. This is uh, the option. This is where you can do all of that. And then you can add something to a mashup, a map story mashup. And uh, th oh, sorry, this is where you can upload. So you can upload drag and drop things. It's basically as it is now, but integrated into the search and upload features. So. Uh, you add the a a time attributes and then you click add and then you add and um, it, it adds it in a in a mashup like I said and you can isolate that particular map story you can I isolate it and separate it by clicking on and off uh, and and view it and y then you can mix and match different uh, map stories okay so um so like for example if you uh, mixed World War One and World War Two, the map stories for World War One and World War Two, this is how it would look, okay? The timeline would look like this. You would have basically I divided this up, there's two parts. This is the start, this is the end, and World War One started in nineteen fourteen, it ended in nineteen seventeen, World War Two started in nineteen thirty nine and ended in forty five. And so it starts here, you click play, it starts here. This is the t uh, current time indicator. Uh, it, it starts here and it goes and it speeds up in this interpolation here and uh, keeps going. 
uh, and uh, you'll notice here it says two billion years ago and it says uh, present here I feel like uh, in the simile timeline you should be able to go back further than the mashups timeline this can be called the uh, I guess map stories timeline or the mashups timeline okay um, and uh, this these uh, this automatically gets added depending on which uh, map stories you have in the mashup. So and these things here, these divots here, these are um, what I'm calling timeline notches. You can actually uh, change the position of them and change how you want it viewed. Um, okay, uh, you'll notice here it says base map story. I feel like we should have base map stories um, as not just base maps. Uh, base maps make sense and you know you can view things in terms of where they are now but um, the thing is is that if you're looking at World War One or World War Two, you're gonna wanna look at it in the uh, context that it was at that time so we really have to actually create map stories that are base map stories okay and that is map story local Okay, that's something that uh, I proposed that name and it's kind of stuck a little bit for the time being and uh, it's it's like every town in the world, every like local area, basically what OpenStreetMap is, but going back in time, you know. So uh, yeah, that should be able to, you should be able to change that uh, as well when you're adding um, uh, and, and, and change different uh, base map story views as well as see the existing map stories. So, or I'm, I'm sorry, base maps like OpenStreetMap or Google Maps or whatever. So, okay, next, uh, this is the chart function. I feel like there should be the ability to see charts. I'm going to go in, into detail about this later. I think this is very important, actually. Um, so, this map story then will become the place where people can see time, or I should say, um, statistics related to geography as well, you know. So, discuss. Every individual map story should have discuss features. Um, one thing that I don't know if I mentioned actually in when the detailed um, overviews is that I feel that um, uh, all these categories should be user generated. Everything should be user generated in map story as much as possible. You know, we are the users right now, and eventually though there'll be more and more users and we'll kind of create a natural hierarchy as was done in Wikipedia you know where uh, there are mediators and arbitrators and people that can change these things and whatnot but it should be a kind of democratic system where it's very participatory eventually and things are done by consensus and whatnot so um so this would be like the map story of Ames Iowa let's say uh, where I live and uh, you it says that there are multiple discussions for this particular map story and you can click on it let's say you clicked on Iowa State this is what would pop up okay now I went into a lot of detail about discussions in in the discussion uh, section because there's a lot of intricate intricate details I feel that need to be designed and it's very rare that discussion systems are designed well and I think that we should uh, not uh, be one of those people so um, next uh, the ability to embed that's there now but I feel like the what we use as the small map story view it's really I think it should only be really good for embedding you know like people should be able to view map stories in the large map story view and if they want to see the small map stories they can but they should kind of view it like this and I actually incorporated timeline features into it. You'll see that things are individual lines and they pop up as features here. I, I made it so that this can be like something complete on its own. Um, I think that's very good and I kind of simplified what you can do here. Um, okay, and uh, history. All right, you should be able to view history uh, and uh, revert edits and do version control of map stories. Um, so, you the history pops up for each map story, each story layer, and even individual attributes. Like if you click on, let's say, uh, you click on a point, let's say, you can view the history of that point if you wanted to. 
that sounds crazy, but I think that it would be very powerful and very useful for people making map stories in the long run. Um, and not only that, this is even more crazy. I think that people should be able to view a map story or view the history of map stories as a map story. So you should be able to view like this is the current time. It's in the middle just like here and you know the current time indicator is is for what's in the center. And as you scroll, you should be able to view how the map story changed. So it'll the timeline will be jumping back and forth and it'll show the before and after for each of these. Each of these will show like before, after, before, after. And uh you know, if you wanted to view individual story layers uh you can click on them here or in here and it will pop up and you can go back and forth between different history views and the ability to view merged you know merges so pay attention to this like there's a button here this is intended to be a button this is where a merge was made something was merged into this layer at this point so uh, you'll see here this is what's here now but let's say you clicked on this merge this button basically you'd be able to view the previous story layers that were merged and you'll see on the bottom here it's also it's also included in the history uh, so you should be able to scrub that as well and remove that and add it and whatnot so um, this could be very powerful in the long run. I, I assume that it would be pretty complicated to uh, develop that. I don't really know, of course, but um, <clears throat> that would be great. And one more thing is is that all these things, all these previous histories, histor history views, these edits, you should be able to fork them as new story layers or map stories. So you should be able to, let's say you don't agree with something or or let's say you wanted to make a different version of a map story, you should be able to fork it and create a from a previous edit. Um, uh, yeah, so going to the next thing. Um, this is editing mode, okay? Editing mode will be based on the mashups that are, of uh, you know, somebody added, and basically you'll have all the same abilities as you did in the viewing mode to be able to add, keep adding map stories and view layers and everything. But um, basically, you'll have to save individual map stories separately. Okay, and when one is selected, you'll see here it's darker red than over here. This is kind of pink. This is more red, and um, basically when you select that it dims or grays out all the other features that are in the mashup so that it's clear which w features you are editing and that might also it might also gray out the other annotations and etc and um so you have that selected and uh you'll have to save each individual one so you click save you click on that and you click save you click on that and you click save and um, uh, you'll see here that I made the buttons look a lot nicer. Uh, I think that's very important. The existing buttons are kind of gross, <laughs> to be honest. Um, they need to be uh, made look a lot nicer. Maybe that can be a contribution we make to GeoNode. Uh, it's just, yeah, I think that aesthetics are very important. We are We can't underemphasize that. We can't just simply say that functionality is all that's important. Aesthetics is very, very important. Um, I think it's not just about what you can do. You know, you should be drawn in by it and it should be pleasing to the eye and that is actually functional for uh, a user. Okay, so, um, and you should be able to click on all these individual annotations and, and edit them within the map. You, you know, you should be able to edit them within the map story as well as for example like with annotations or I'm sorry this is attributes you should be able to edit attributes individual attributes by you know I'll go back you know you can click on this thing and edit edit that particular point or you can uh, you can add a you can edit the attributes the metadata for each attribute as well and uh, you know you can also view the attributes in the viewing mode if you wanted to um, 
and any of these attributes can be taken out and created you know you can use a new them for a new store uh, different story layers and whatnot okay um, and so like for annotations you're editing annotations you should be able to do it in a table as well and anything that's in this column here would appear here and in, anything that's not would only appear here and in the map um, but everything that's in the map would be here and some of those things that would be here and here would be on the side based on if they are in this uh, column here but uh, there's a variety of ways that you can add annotations you can click on the map and add an annotation as you can now uh, directly or you can do it in the table and it would be nice to be able to also upload a table I mean there are some map stories that we might add that are huge that people like you know just literally um, want to add several events into into something at once it would be really cumbersome for people to expect them to add individual annotations one by one by one when they can just upload it all at once I think that would be actually very useful. I mean, even for my Ames map story, map story, it might it might be very useful for me to add all these things in a timeline. So, I mean, imagine if you could uh, copy a timeline, uh, like a written timeline, paste it into a table, uh, format it for for it, and then just put it in there and upload it, and it would be annotated from an existing timeline. That would be that would be very useful. So. Okay, so that's editing mode, and and uh, one more thing that uh, I nearly forgot was that you know th th there are some additional considerations I wanted to uh, include in, in that um, you know we should really consider how layering is done. Um, I think that we should have four different kinds of layering. I'll explain that in more detail. You know, you can you can understand that more later. But you should be able to reuse an existing story layer. So. An existing story layer or even a, an element like an annotation can be universal so everywhere it's edited that's kind of how we're doing that, things now but you it would be nice to even have that being uh, done for individual attributes or annotations and um, also you can duplicate and fork layers uh, and that would not be reused those would be different uh, and you can do a merge into um, and another thing that I thought of was that it would be nice to do uh, instances so like it would basically be reusing an existing layer or attribute and you can um, style it differently in, in, in different contexts like in a different story layer you might want to make roads red versus black versus blue or whatever um, or you might even want to have instances where uh, certain layers are not uh, shown you know, like in a certain map story, uh, a layer is not shown, uh, etc. So, um, uh, and some additional considerations. Uh, I think that story layers should be de-emphasized. Uh, we shouldn't. It doesn't really make sense to have them searchable. I think that map stories are what you want to show, and if you want to find a story layer, it's in the map story. So that should be a, a keyword. And if somebody does want to. Sh uh, share a particular story layer like as if it's a map story it should be a map story like uh, I'll explain that more like I said later but um and this is just a last thing I think that we should use map story like we use the people use the term Kleenex for tissue we should use map story not just for map stories in map story but any time-based map um, we I think we have the power to do that because map story is really gonna change the way we look at mapping because I think that that's really where it's going to proliferate from time-based mapping from map story uh, we didn't invent it by any means but I think that we will be the ones to uh, popularize its use so uh, another thing last thing I'll mention is um, oh this is uh, messy okay uh, I did a uh, overview a written overview of everything uh, this is uh, five pages long single-spaced uh, you know I'm gonna do some formatting and stuff but uh, I'm gonna finalize this and send this along the way as well as as well as all the um, as well as all the uh, screenshots or I'm sorry the mock-ups that I did everything will be together and you can also download the video as well